Hey, welcome to Happy Tales of Happy Tales, the podcast where you'll hear stories of the way pubs have touched our hearts and our lives. So for the next few minutes, let everything else go and just listen and smile. I'm your host, Lily Jackson. Hi friends and welcome back. This morning I just was thinking about a story from many, many years ago, but it was really sweet and I thought I would share it with you. Years ago, when I was still in college, I remember I called home and said that I I wanted to adopt a dog. And my parents, you know, no, you can't do that. You're going to school. You're busy. It's a big commitment. You don't have time to take care of a dog. But I was really determined that I was going to rescue a dog. And then that first weekend that I had her, that was Allie. She was a little Sheltie Corgi mix, and she was adorable. I took her home. And of course, from then on, my parents always had grand dogs. They were immediately smitten with her and every other dog, of course, that ever rescued me. So years later, I was out of school and I had three dogs. At the time, it was Allie Murphy, who was a precious little border collie yellow lab mix and a little guy named Carver, who was such a character. He was a little... I used to say he was a chihuahua fox flying squirrel mix. And um, I'll have plenty of stories to share about them in the future as well. But this one's about Sweet Murphy. Murphy was kind of the underdog. And so he, Murphy came from the SPCA and someone had not been kind to Murphy. So he was very timid sometimes and, and a little skittish. As long as I had him, if I reached down to pet him on the head too fast, he would just drop to the ground and tuck his little tail. So um, he was very, very sweet, though, gentle-natured and and always looking out for everybody. So Murphy kind of had an underdog personality. At one point in the mix, Murphy needed to have surgery, and because he was one of three dogs— they said we should probably, after his surgery, you know, he needed to stay still for a few days. And so we were trying to figure out how to do that because they said we probably should separate him from the other pups so that he's not tempted to play or, you know, watch out for over everybody or, or anything like that. And so, of course, immediately my father, my dad, we'll take him. We'll take him. Murphy can stay with us. So Murphy had his surgery and we... Took, I took Murphy over to my mom and dad's house and in their room, whenever, whenever I would go visit, they lived about 40 minutes away. And so anytime I would go over there, I would always take the pups with me. They always wanted to see the pups and the pups always wanted to see them. And in my, and sometimes the pups of course would spend the night over there and, and my parents in their room, they had a couch and the bed and Murphy loved to jump back and forth between the two. And especially when he was feeling playful, he'd get all excited and, and he would jump back and forth between the two. And so we they, we were concerned about him pulling stitches and didn't want him jumping up on the bed or jumping between the furniture. So he's staying there with my mom and dad. And then my mom informs me they had a room. We always called it the sewing room. It was kind of a crafting room, laundry room. And it had in it the good old linoleum floors instead of carpet and my mother informs me that my father has put a little like camping mattress on the floor and made a little bed out of some other cushion things for Murphy in that room. And my dad was sleeping on the floor in this room with Murphy so that Murphy would not be tempted to jump up on the furniture in their room, but also so that he didn't have to sleep by himself. Well, as the days start going on, I start talking about my plans to come pick Murphy up and when they thought would be a good day, what's convenient for them, when I could make it over. And Dad, I, I don't I don't think he's fully recovered yet. I, I think I think he needs a little bit more time. Oh, okay. Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. He just I just think he needs I need he needs a few more days. Okay. Well, okay. Days started running into week two. And then I could see that week two was kind of 
creeping towards week three. And it quickly became apparent Murphy was fine, but dad did not want to let Murphy go. So we eventually agreed it was time for Murphy to come back home. And I go over there. I go to get Murphy. Of course, dad's very sad. But then dad (laughs) hands me this piece of paper. And on it, it says Kroger French Vanilla. And I looked at him and I, I was like, what, what is this? And he said, this is Murphy's favorite brand of ice cream and favorite flavor. And I was like, what? And mom says, yes, your dad gives him a bowl of ice cream every night. And they've gone through multiple flavors and finally determined that French vanilla is his favorite, but it has to be the Kroger brand. That's what he likes best. And I started laughing and I looked at him and he said, also, He really loves to see the buildings in downtown Fort Worth. (laughs) So what are you talking about? And she said, he discovered that that Murphy also really likes to go for rides. And so he was taking Murphy for drives. And Murphy really loved to see all the activity in downtown Fort Worth and all the buildings. So that was his favorite destination. So at least at least once, you know, every few days, he would load Murphy up in the car and drive him through downtown Fort Worth so he could see the buildings and every night give him a bowl of Kroger French vanilla ice cream. So I I did, believe it or not, get Murphy back, although I think that Murphy and Dad were reluctant. And it did become obvious that I might have a hard time providing Murphy with the standard of living he had become accustomed to over the last couple weeks but um, it was very very sweet just to see of course my dad always did have a soft heart but just to see the way that those two bonded with each other and and loved each other and how how dogs just can make such a profound impact on our lives in just by being themselves so I hope y'all enjoyed this just a quick little little anecdote this morning to share some of the joy that pups have brought into our lives so have a wonderful day Uh, if you would please follow subscribe in your podcatcher go to the website check us out we've got resources on the website of some great pup things as we discover them that we like to share you can follow us on social media instagram facebook linkedin etter at her Twitter. I don't even know what that is. Twitter formerly X. That's what that is. We'll just call it Edder now. I don't even know. And let's see what else. Anyway, also, if you know people that are dog lovers, if you would just share with them. And if you have a dog, I would love to hear your story. It doesn't have to be a specific event, although everybody can come up with stories about their dogs when they think about it that make them smile or make them laugh. And it's just fun and heartwarming to talk about our pups. It's fun and heartwarming to hear other people who love their pups as much as we do. So if you have a dog, I would love to hear your story. You can contact me through the website. That's happytalesofhappytales.com. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And remember, you are as great as your dog thinks you are. Bye, y'all. And oh my gosh, how about X formerly Twitter? Thanks, y'all.